guys, in this video I'm going to introduce you to an emulator that is more expensive or equivalent to many consoles out there such as a Nintendo Switch, even more expensive than a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. And this type of emulator here can be considered one of the best emulation devices on the market and let me tell you why. It's an emulator that runs countless consoles, arcades, and PCs with extreme precision. It always receives updates, it's always receiving support for new platforms, and it's an open source project. This emulator is called Mr. FPGA. The great thing about Mr. and what for me even justifies its price is the fact that it is extremely precise. It basically behaves in the same way as original hardware. In other words, the experience of playing, for example, Punch-Out on an 8-bit Nintendo is the same. This isn't always the case with traditional emulators. And don't get me wrong, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to enjoy games, to enjoy old games, and it's even cheaper and more practical to download a free emulator to play what you can do on your PC, what you can do on your cell phone. As for the Mr. FPGA, the reason it's so accurate is that its emulation isn't done via software, but via hardware using an FPGA chip, which stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. This type of chip can be programmed to behave like other individual chips or like sets of chips. So, when the Mr. is running, for example, a 16-bit console, it emulates the complete set of that console, processor, audio chip, video card, and so on. So if you change the emulation from, for example, a Super Nintendo to a Mega Drive, the Mr. FPJ will rearrange itself, and in this rearrangement it emulates each component of the Mega Drive in which you put the Mega Drive to run inside the Mr. And those components I mentioned all run in parallel. In fact, this point about emulating different components in parallel is very important for the accuracy of the emulation. This is something that differentiates hardware emulation from software emulation. Because software emulation can't normally process several components in parallel, it emulates the steps in series, one at a time. This means that the emulation is not as faithful, not as accurate as the original hardware. And then, speaking of the Mr., in addition to its precision, a huge advantage is its low latency. It's extremely quick to respond, especially when we use the Mr. with wired control. So, for example, the PlayStation 5's DualSense has a latency of around 6 milliseconds on the Mr. in wireless mode. But wired, the latency is 2 milliseconds with DualSense. And something very important for me to say now is that Mr. isn't the only hardware emulator on the market, and I'm not even being sponsored, I'm just introducing it to you. Analog consoles, for example, such as Super Ent, Mega SG, among others. These consoles all use FPGA type chips for emulation. Retro AVS, which emulates the Nintendo 8 bit and Famicom, also use FPGA for emulation. And various flash cards also use FPGA for emulation, like the Mega EverDrive Pro and the Terra Onion Mega SD. These are Mega Drive cartridges that can even play Sega CD games, because in the Mega SD and the Mega EverDrive Pro we have an FPGA inside these cartridges that will even emulate the Sega CD, as I told you, which is quite difficult, right? Anyway, the advantage of the Mr. then, in my opinion, compared to analog consoles or EverDrives, is the fact that it can run an absurd number of consoles, arcades, and PCs. The simplest, most practical option is to buy a pre-assembled Mr., which is usually a little more expensive due to the labor involved. Another option is to buy the components separately and assemble the Mr. yourself. So now I'm going to focus on showing the platforms I'm most interested in playing on and I'm going to show these platforms already configured, running various games, and I'm going to try to divide the video into generations. The first platform I'd like to show you running here on the Mr. is the Atari. This is a platform that I don't show so much here on the channel because frankly it's not a platform that appeals to me so much, not these days. But there's no denying the importance of Atari in the world of games. The second platform I'm going to show you is the Nintendo 8-bit, which is one of the best platforms of all time. 
I think it's amazing how good Nintendo games remain today, even though it's a console from the ADS. Mario 3 is an example of how far ahead of his time Miyamoto was. Even today, he's a phenomenal game developer. In Mr., we can even remove a limitation of this Nintendo, which is the maximum number of simultaneous sprites on the screen, and we can activate the enhancement to increase the number of sprites on the screen. Honestly, it's not something that has much impact on gameplay, but visually it can make some games more enjoyable. The third platform I'm going to show you is the Game Boy, which runs extremely well on the Mr. The Game Boy Core runs both the traditional Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, and it's even possible to run Game Boy games in the original color palette or in the Game Boy Color palette, as well as in custom color palettes. I even tested Mario Land with the two original options from the first Game Boy and also on the Game Boy Color. The game looks pretty good in both options, but I prefer the Game Boy Color version. Then I went and tested Wario Land, which is a highly praised game, very different. Fourthly, I'm going to show you a core that runs two platforms, which is the Master System core. It runs not only the Master System, but also the Game Gear. I imagine this is because they are very similar platforms. So on the Master System, I want to replay Alex Kidd in Miracle World, which I played a lot when I was a kid. At friends' houses, at the house of a neighbor I also had who had the Master System. It's a game I liked a lot. I played it briefly on the Mister, and I realized that the gameplay of this game is very complicated. It's a very slippery game, if I can describe it like that. Fifthly, I'm going to mention a platform that is a transition from 8 to 16 bits which is Turbo Graphics, also known as PC Engine. It was very successful in Japan, this platform. I'm not that familiar with it, although I have it on Game Sticks, but I want to familiarize myself with it, because I've seen a lot that interests me on PC Engine. There are a lot of Turbo Graphics games that I want to try, that I want to get to know. And next I'm going to mention the Mega Drive. We're really getting into 16-bit now. Mega Drive has a strong presence on Mr. because you can play Mega Drive games, you can also play Sega CD and 32X on Mr. Another platform that has a very rich library of games is the Super Nintendo, one of the best platforms in the history of games there in my opinion. The arcade has a very strong presence on Mr. For anyone who's a fan of fighting games, Mr. is a paradise because you'll see countless versions of Street Fighter, fighting games like Men, Children of the Atom, which is a fighting game that I really enjoy. Anyway, there are endless arcade centers, and there are lots of non-fighting arcade games that I want to get to know and play. And now we're going to start seeing how Mr. is phenomenal with 2D, but in my opinion not so good with 3D, because Mr. will run things in 2D in an incredible way. It's simply transforming the sprites we saw on a tube TV into something we're seeing on a TV on a flat screen monitor. But with 3D, we end up having a poor experience because everything is very square. Traditional emulators via software are usually able to upscale, make the resolution of games better. Mr. doesn't do that, so you're seeing PlayStation 1 games, honestly, ugly, right? They look better with the upscale that other emulators can do. So for games that are 2D or for games that have pre-rendered scenery, Mr. works well. Except that I didn't think it was cool to run games like Crash Team Racing on Mr., which is a really fun game, but it's very square. The same thing with Gran Turismo Silent Hill, Tekken 2, which I loved. With regard to absences that I miss, because there are absences that I don't miss, but some absences I do miss, I'm surprised there's no core to run 3DO and Jaguar on the Mister, but I think this is a combination of them being advanced consoles, i.e. more difficult to program for the Mister, with the fact that there isn't as much interest in developing cores for these platforms, because PlayStation and Sega Saturn are advanced consoles, even more advanced than 3DO and Jaguar, and they're appearing on Mister. But 3DO and Jaguar aren't on Mister. Maybe one day they'll appear, I don't know. Now one console that is very unlikely to appear on Mister, or even run well, is the Nintendo 64. Because it's a very complex console, very difficult to emulate, and unfortunately apparently Mister doesn't have enough processing power to handle a core 
for the Nintendo 64. I've opted to take the screenshots here without filters. But you should know that Mr. offers several CRT filters of excellent quality. And I myself like using CRT filters, because a good CRT filter can simulate very well the effects of adjacent pixels merging, and even transparency effects that used to happen on tube TVs. And guys, Mr. can also run several old computers. It can emulate, for example, a 486 computer. In general, this type of FPGA equipment is very interesting for emulation. It has an emulation that is incredible, really very precise, and it's a very practical system. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll leave it at that. Thanks, everyone.